Hey there, we are doing something a little bit different. I am actually diving into the past. It's a blast from the past. This was Ty's idea, not mine. I am going to go through one of my most popular business blog posts from like, I don't know, 2010. It's, it's, a, it's an old blog post, but some of the foundational information that I shared in this blog post is how I have grown my business. And I'm going to talk about, is it still relevant in 2022? And do I still recommend it? Okay, so we're going to dive into this blog post. The title of this blog post is just brand boosters. Uh, because I didn't know anything about SEO at the time. I didn't realize that that's not descriptive at all. That's not going to show up in a search result at all, but it's still one of our most, our most popular posts. And I'm going to read you the, I'm going to explain what a brand booster is, but first I want to read you this first paragraph. <laughs> also, there's been a typo in here for over a decade. Many gave emailed me, <laughs> many have emailed me and have asked about my branding. Who made your website? I did because I'm a show a tear. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am still a show a tear. I'm still, I don't even think, is that a word anymore? Nope. We're, we don't call ourselves show a tears. I use show it. It's my website platform. And I did, I built my website from scratch. All my sales page, everything is still in show it. Show it has definitely evolved with the time. So that's a win. Okay. Who made your logo, your blog? How'd you decide on teal? How do you make people remember you and keep coming back to your blog? These are all great questions I receive all the time. And when I think about photographers, I love following, they all have something in common. They all share a similar marketing strategy and it works. These photographers use what I like to call brand boosters. Brand boosters are, I'm just going to keep going. How, what a great little, what a great little marketer I was when I was 22 years old. Now I created this term, so it's not official. Don't try to look it up. And I may not be the first to coin this phrase. So if I'm copying someone, forgive me, a brand booster is anything within a business that makes it more unique, set apart and builds up an existing brand. We're in an industry where we have to be unique, which is so fascinating because back in the day when I wrote this, you didn't actually have to be that unique because there weren't that many of us. Now it's like everything I'm saying from 2010 is amplified times a hundred. Like if you had showed me how many photographers there are just in Richmond, our area, our city alone, back when I wrote this, I, I wouldn't believe you. So this is more important. I actually think maybe more important now than it was back then. There are so many photographers out there that have amazing images. Anyone can shoot weddings with a 50 millimeter lens. I still use that kind of, I guess that's kind of changed and have awesome images and have a similar style to mine. So how do I become unique in a saturated market full of photographers trying to do the same exact thing? I market myself and my brand about me. And I do this through brand boosters. So these are things, this is, this is funny. The photographers incorporate into their blogging, tweeting, and Facebooking. <laughs> have you seen my Twitter account? <laughs> I mean, I'm embarrassed to look at my Twitter. I don't, I don't get on Twitter. Some be, Twitter has evolved into a different, it's different industry focus and that's fine. Um, you can still tweet and be a photographer. It's just not, Instagram was evidently not a thing. Facebook was the thing and blogging was the thing, but it allows viewers into their personal life to form a connection. And the reason why, the reason why I blogged about this was because so many people had never even considered the idea that there was more to them than just their images. The only way that they visualized marketing was showing their work. That was it. And what I was finding is that I was, I was surpassing people in my marketing and it had nothing to do with my images, which didn't make sense because I did have decent images at the time. Like I was a leading photographer at the time and people were like, Oh, it's just because of her work. And I'm like, no, no guys, you're missing it. It's not because of my work. It's because of these things that no one has put a name to. So I put a name to, these are my brand boosters at the time. I Jasmine Starr. So what, what were some of her brand boosters? Her past, she has an incredible story. Polo, her dog. Uh, she's not the best cook in the world, makes fun of herself. JD, huge part of her business. And then Pinkberry. I don't, I highly doubt she still eats. If you follow her, she they probably, went, they, went out of business. they went out of business actually. So d you know, Never mind. Um, and then I list some others on here. I have a whole list here, but I get down to our brand boosters. And this is the funny part. Some of the brand boosters from the past were, I got married and had a peacock wedding. I blogged so much of my wedding planning process. And I look back and I'm like, oh wow, I really overdid it with that brand booster. But people loved it. They loved, and after our wedding, when they first started seeing our picture, I mean, people were ecstatic, which is so funny to me, but they loved it. Peacock, everything. Everyone knew 
I loved peacocks. I got peacock gifts from photographers, from my clients. I have a whole peacock tree upstairs because of all of these said gifts too. Um, my brand booster was Michael because he's handsome and he's an amazing husband. So I blog about him. <laughs> what? Yeah, I made mean, a handsome husband. Why not use his handsomeness to further my brand? It, it worked well. Uh, three, I'm addicted to Diet Mountain Dew, which is embarrassing. And I wonder how many, how many problems that is causing in my life now health-wise because I had like one or two a day back then. Four, I'm young and graduated from college a year and a half ago. Oh my gosh. <gasps> I was so young. And I, but I talked about that a lot, like that I was not, I hadn't been doing this for 20 years. And it's interesting because I just emailed with a photographer yesterday who was in high school and she's trying to hide the fact that she's young. And I'm like, no, you don't want to hide the fact that you're young. You want to use that, but you want to make sure you are young with credibility and professional qualities about your brand. So that was my brand, one of my brand boosters. Teal's my favorite color. That, I have teal islands, minty colored islands in my kitchen. It is still very much a part of my brand in my life. I love to decorate. I showed off our before and afters of our home. This was before we had kids and I had time to do stuff like that. Um, Michael was a youth pastor. And so we would share that our life was full of teenagers and retreats and camps and trips and service projects. Uh, I blogged about it all. It's actually still my blog. And last but not least, our newest brand booster. This is sad. Our puppy. Oh, poor Boca. We actually have photographers that have followed us for 14 years and now they're like, where is Boca? Well, Boca boy, as cute as he is, he's not good with kids. He tries to bite them. He nip. We have tried multiple times, like let's bring him home and see if, if anything has changed. The older he gets, the crankier he gets. And so I wouldn't necessarily say he's still a brand booster. So that has definitely changed from 2010, but he lives with Michael's parents and he's very, very happy. So don't feel sorry for him. Anyway, I look at this list and I think about, okay, you, if you don't know what a brand booster is, you may be thinking, why does this matter? It matters because these are things about my life that I brought into my brand to make me more than a photographer. If you only share your images, you will only ever be a photographer that people like your images, but they don't care a, at all about you. They're not connected to you at all. What you say doesn't carry weight. What you do doesn't have any impact because you are just someone that takes pretty pictures. But if you allow people into your life more so than just, I love gummy bears and Diet Mountain Dew, there starts to become a connection formed, right? People don't love me because I used to love Diet Mountain Dew. People loved, love me and follow me because I let them into my life in little ways. So my brand boosters have shifted, but I still have them and they still work. They just look a little bit different. This is where this started. It started at a foundational level where I realized maybe my business is meant for more than just showing off pretty pictures I take. And maybe there's part of me and my life and what I love and what I'm drawn to that other people will attach themselves to and figure out, you know what? I remember there's this redhead I follow. She's got a crazy story. She also loves gummy bears. I love gummy bears. Anyway, you got to follow her. That sounds crazy. Like, no, that's not going to make an impact but it does. And it do, it's, it worked then and it works now. Our brand boosters have shifted so much because our life has shifted so much, but that doesn't mean that they're not as impactful. It just means that they look different. So I would say our brand boosters now very heavily dependent on our kids, right? Because they are our life. Like we, we run a business, but we also have introduced a new concept of, we have this new passion. We started a school, like we own a micro school with my brother and sister, brother-in-law and sister, um, for our children. And so if you follow us, you hear the story of that passion and that part of our life. And it's fascinating because people that have followed us for a while, they're in the same exact season. All that to say, brand boosters are still relevant. I don't think your brand boosters should be, I love coffee. That is probably an overused brand booster. In fact, it's definitely an overused brand booster. I would even say, don't bring a coffee cup to your next branding session for your headshots. Just avoid that. It's just overdone, but you're going to share about your life in a way that makes people realize like, oh, I get, I get her. I understand that. Maybe there's some things in your life that you're like, gosh, Kaylin, I have nothing to share. Yes, you do. That is a lie. It's a lie that is based in insecurity and a lack of confidence. 
Everyone has something to share. Think about your life and who you are as a person and what you love and what you're drawn to and what you're good at beyond your camera, beyond Lightroom, beyond your lenses, beyond your gear, beyond anything about photography. What is it about your life that you are unique in? I was just scrolling through my Instagram feed um, currently and the theme, the way that I'm allowing people to be connected to me and the brand boosters of my current life is that I'm just letting you into my life in little ways. And some of them are not perfectly curated. I actually think it works to my advantage that they don't look perfect. It doesn't look perfectly color corrected. It doesn't look like, oh my gosh, your house is so neat and tidy. I'm just letting people see that I am a real person. There's so many photographers that people could choose. There's so many educators that people can choose. Why are people choosing us? because we're letting them trust us through letting them into our life. And I think as, as a photographer and as an educator and as a business owner that owns multiple businesses, I'm recognizing that this is always something that's essential to growth. And it's always something that's essential to a brand that people can't get enough of. If you want to be at this tier, this level where people are like, I've got to have Caitlin, I've got to have insert your name. There's no other option for me. That's probably not going to come just from your Instagram feed looking amazing. It's going to come from a connection. And if someone has a personal connection to you because you have created a space and the availability of content for them to feel connected to you, no one can take that away from you. What if there was actually value to the other parts of me, not just who I am as a photographer. And it's that very specific part that you could add into your business that makes you untouchable. No one can touch what I'm doing because no one can be exactly me. People can try, they can make their brand and they've done this. People make their brand look like me. I literally have had people that have had to take down their website because it's a, just a clone copy of who I am. I'm not threatened in business by that because of the brand that I have created. You can't compete with KJ, not because I am that amazing, but because I have let you see a unique side of me and everybody has that possibility. You, But it takes risk and it takes vulnerability and it takes trust that who you are is someone that the world wants to see. If you're a photographer or you're a business owner in general, that's just like, I just, I, I want to raise my prices, but there's nothing online representing you except your work, then your work gets compared to the next person down the street's work. And then yeah, the next determining factor of whether or not someone's going to book you is who's cheaper because they don't really care about who it is. They just need their pictures taken. So if you want to get out of that category of competition of price, you've got to elevate yourself. And the only way you can elevate yourself and step, step apart from people is your experience and who you are. And that starts with your content. So brand boosters go much deeper than just cutesy things you're going to blog about or put on Instagram. It is establishing a brand that no one else can compete with. The whole goal of this is you become more human when you share your human traits, your human qualities, your passions, your interests, the quirky stuff, the weird stuff. It makes you more human and humans connect more to people that are more human. People that look perfect and just produce pretty images are not, you can't connect with them. You can, but it's very hard. And, so, and there's a limit to it. There's a cap. All that to say, brand boosters, is this still relatable in 2022? Oh my gosh, yes. It just looks a little bit different, but it's different in a good way, right? I think it's more necessary now than it ever was back then because there's so much noise and there's so much chaos and there's so many photographers and there's so many pretty images. Pretty images don't get you enough engagement and they never will. This is a great tool to apply in your off season as you're figuring out how do I want to market differently? Let yourself be yourself online. I hope this was encouraging for you. This is going way back way back in the day. This is the content that started it all and built the brand that I have now that employs literally my entire family, allows me to grow and thrive, not just as a photographer, but as an educator as well. It all started with the foundation of, I'm just going to let people get to know me and I'm not going to be nervous about it. I'm going to just share who I am. If you find this helpful and you're like, I want to learn more about how Caitlin thinks about business, we actually have non-photographers in our business course because it's this type of content, but it was made for photographers with photographers in mind. And you can leave messages, comments about questions about our business collection. It is our number one best business resource that we have available um, to business owners, um, mostly photographers. That's who it was created for. So anyway, hope this was helpful. I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.